Welcome, Five for Faithers. We're just going to jump into a five minute video for you. We're going to be talking about marriage. My brother and I were um, just talking the other day um, about an individual that we really respected and said something that caught us both off guard about marriage. And we were just talking about a couple who we knew who um, they're living together and uh, this individual who we trusted said well yeah they are married in God's eyes anyway and it kind of struck us is that something that is uh, taken away from what marriage truly is and we really thought so so we had a really good conversation about well what does marriage look like in God's eyes I think it's really important for us as believers to get a grasp of true marriage. What is it that is the design that our Creator God actually had for this institution of marriage? We find the first look at it in the book of Genesis at the beginning with Adam and Eve. We know this in that uh, God uh, called Adam to leave his family <laughs> and subsequent um, uh, generations would do the same to leave their family and to be united to your wife and so he did that with Eve and of course we're talking about being uh, together sexually is the first bond but we also see another truth about marriage there as well and that is a man and a woman those are the first two things we see. But this, this other thing is these, when these two become one flesh, well, certainly that can happen in a relationship outside of marriage. So are they truly married at that point? I, I don't believe so. Because even if they've become one flesh intimately, they are not married. Are they husband and wife? No, they're not. So that's our first look at this thought. Secondly, a man and a woman, there is no place in God's word for homosexuality being a married couple. In fact, I think that again takes away from his design of marriage. Third, it's meant to be monogamous. It's meant, meant to be between a man and a woman, not several others involved in this marriage. Even throughout the Old Testament times when there was polygamy, it was not something that was encouraged by God. And there were consequences to it, just like there were consequences to adultery. So God's design of marriage is that it's between a single man and a single woman. It is a true covenant, an agreement, a decision, a commitment between two individuals. And, and I like this thought that it's a newly formed triune relationship, a man, a woman, and their God, much like God himself uh, relationally. And, and I just like that thought. And it's also this thought of, of it being lasting until one of you should pass on, or certainly if it's broken, there's only one exception for divorce, and that's unfaithfulness. It's supposed to be met uh, as a time that's lasting uh, until it's broken by death. And, and then uh, it, it, with that, as long as you both shall live, we hear this a lot during wedding ceremonies, probably haven't heard it in a while with our COVID situation, not a lot of people having big ceremonies, so we're not invited as much. But it's until death. With that being said, Paul reminds us in chapter 7 of Romans that uh, the law binds us together as long as your spouse is living. So that's interesting. I want to encourage you to read Romans 7 in, in that illustration of marriage. And then lastly, before God and these witnesses, right? We, say, we hear those words as well at wedding, but uh, at weddings. Before God and these witnesses, I'm going to make this commitment to my new spouse. Um, 
uh, perhaps it's here that we have this covenant ratified and, and it's shown to be true by these witnesses because that's really what they are, is uh, bringing the proof, the evidence that these two have made a commitment. Um, and, and so it's before God and these witnesses. So, so church, we, we should be clear on marriage and, and not be sideways or muddied at all. We should be absolutely clear about what God's design is. What is it in his eyes? Who is it in his eyes that are truly married? For you guys maybe taking the next step, God is a God of order. Don't get those out of order that you just jump in and live together and then you figure out how to try to be married. No, do it in the right order and discover what the true sense of your relationship should be. Marriage is a commitment between God and these witnesses. It's meant, meant to be between a man and a woman. It's meant to be monogamous. It's meant to be truthful in terms of being before God and witnesses. And then it's also the thought that I am not going to be separated from this individual until that person would pass on. This is some things to be reminded of. I just hope that your marriage is strengthened. You have more time together during this time as well. But let us define what it is and what God thinks about this awesome, wonderful institution. Thanks again, church. Appreciate it.